Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Torsten Ely. I'm with City Green Solutions and today's topic is Energy Star for New Homes. This is a webinar that we have um, had on I think a couple of times over the last six or eight months. Um, there are some updates and um, we are going to start straight away. If you have any sound problems or let's put it the other way around if you could just give us some feedback on how the sound is uh, just um, give us feedback using the question box that would be appreciated so with me here today is Chris Birchel uh, Chris is looking after the technical aspects looking after the computers um, we have uh, about 23 builders energy advisors and building officials um, sign up for this webinar and most of them are online now. It's a one-hour webinar. The end of this webinar, there will be a, a short survey. If you could just take a couple of minutes to give us some feedback. Uh, we would like to have some feedback on what topics you would like to see covered, um, on how, the, how this presentation um, was, and, um, and so on and so forth. We will make the slides available. We will send them to you as a PDF, and uh, we will also make the recording available to you. If you have any questions, um, just use the question box and we will address these questions and we'll send out a document, a Q&A document, so that everyone sees what everyone else was asking and what the answers are. If you experience any audio or video problems, um, let me just turn the highlighter on here. Use this section here. Let me just laser pointer this is better use this section uh, just switch from mic and speakers to telephone or the other way around make sure that the webinar software is um, um, not not buried by other uh, programs on your computer that might sometimes cause some video problems and and the question box looks like this here just uh, enter your questions or your uh, comments and uh, Chris will be able to see them. This whole webinar uh, was made possible by financial contributions from Natural Resources Canada. There is a program called uh, Driving Demand or Driving BC Demand for Energy Star for New Homes and this is uh, uh, the program we are working in here. If you have technical problems that you can't solve, there is a phone number. The webinar provider uh, gave us a phone number that you can call and you should get uh, immediate um, help there. So it's 1-877-582-7011 and then press 1 and 1 and you should have someone helping you out with your technical problems. My name is Thorsten Ely. I'm a um, civil engineer trained in Germany. Uh, I'm the senior building energy analyst for City Green Solutions. I'm also a certified energy manager and I have done uh, thousands of energy assessments and energy audits um, across BC. City Green Solution is a non-profit organization or an, an enterprising non-profit organization. We have an A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and we are operating since 1999 and uh, with with our network of energy advisors throughout BC, we have performed more than 30,000 energy assessments. Before I start with Energy Star for New Homes, I just would like to invite you um, to reach out to the energy advisor community out there. There are many energy advisors available across BC and these energy advisors are the new energy efficiency consultants for part nine buildings, for uh, single family buildings. You really want to uh, connect with an, with an energy advisor of your choice. They help you with um, um, R value, they help you with mid construction blow door test. They do all the energy guide rating, energy modeling. If you need a compliance report for, uh, for the building code, um, 936.5 energy advisors can help you out there and energy advisors many of them are certified to do energy stuff on your homes so um, I like this little picture here yeah you the builder and maybe your designer or architect and the mechanical uh, consultant and this is the energy advisor and you all bring your unique skills to the table and really want to make sure that uh, you're not missing out on the advice and um, and uh, skills that an energy advisor can um, provide for your project. 
So let's start with Energy Star. Before we look into the um, Energy Star for new homes uh, specifics, let's just um, look at Energy Star in general. It's an international brand and it's amazing. When they did a research or a survey, more than 88% of the Canadians recognize the Energy Star. So there is a huge market uh, penetration. So Energy Star is recognized almost by everyone and it's trusted. The label is it's very much very much trusted. So if you see an Energy Star appliance, you just know and trust that this uh, appliance is an energy efficient one. And um, over the years, you know, they started way back with um, computer monitors and now there are more than 70 products including homes that can be Energy Star labeled. And um, so what is an Energy Star certified home? Well, it is a home that is typically about 20% more energy efficient than a code built house. And uh, there is an, an air tightness target, there are targets for um, the uh, plug loads and appliances and lighting and um, it's constructed by, an, by a licensed builder and you get a government backed um, label at the end of the process. And so the 20% are more energy efficient uh, home is typically achieved by having a you know more energy efficient heating and cooling system. The the windows are um, more energy efficient than a standard code built house. The walls are in most of the cases better insulated than a code built house, and uh, they are Energy Star products. And um, not to forget um, Energy Star for new homes projects. They all have a heat recovery ventilator and. We will um, talk about this in a little while. So what are the benefits for you, for, for you as the builder? Well, you, you get a, um, a benefit just because Energy Star is a recognized um, a label, a recognized brand and these houses typically sell faster and they sell for a premium. Um, the program itself is um, designed to give you maximum flexibility so you can achieve Energy Star in many different ways and the um, government backed label it definitely helps in this process. There are as, as we know more and more home buyers out there that are, that are uh, concerned about climate or, uh, greenhouse gas emissions so Energy Star um, is one um, right step into a future where houses just use um, and produce um, fewer greenhouse gas emissions. Before we add on, I also want to point out um, something that you might have heard of, um, the step code, um, something that is going to be introduced to the building industry um, or will come into effect actually on December 17th, I believe, of this year. Step code is a, a new tool that uh, municipalities will have available to them in order to increase energy efficiency uh, requirements uh, beyond code. So if you have to go through a rezoning process, um, municipalities will be able to pick and choose from these steps a an energy efficiency level that is higher than code. And I just want to point out, you see step uh, three with 20% beyond code. That was basically established to kind of meet um, the um, energy star for new homes requirements. So by building energy star homes, you kind of prepare yourself for possible step code requirements further down the road. And you can see air tightness uh, targets will become um, more and more um, popular. The current building code doesn't have an air tightness target. There is an emphasis on air tightness but no target yet. But this is all going to change and the step code is um, one step towards um, actual air tightness targets. And we will talk about the air tightness target in within the Energy Star um, for New Homes uh, program. So how does um, Energy Star uh, turn out in, in, in Canada? Well, looking over to the east, um, Ontario has a very successful Energy Star um, um, market. Um, as you can see, 2005 there was hardly any and then um, now we are up to 
30% market share. So every third house uh, built in Ontario is an energy star house. Here in BC, numbers are uh, still, you know, at, at the lower end. Um, we started much later than um, Ontario, but you can see um, the signal is, um, or the, the building industry, you builders have recognized Energy Star as one possible program, and the numbers are going up. Um, and this is what we want to see: uh, zero in um, back in 2015, and now we have more than um, 200 uh, enrollments and uh, builder registrations are going up and then um, you can also see a lot of the projects that are on the go are now being certified. So where does Energy Star kind of stand in comparison with other programs that are out there? Well, you have the BC Building Code, you have Energy Star, and I said it's about 20% um, more energy efficient than the Building Code. There is uh, R2000, uh, about 50% more energy efficient. There's Passive House, about 80-90% more efficient. And then obviously there's Net Zero, a house that doesn't require any additional energy anymore. So with kind of, with focusing on energy stuff for new homes, we are raising the bar and then hopefully step by step we will go this direction. So by um, focusing on Energy Star for now, you are helping to raise the bar um, towards a more energy efficient uh, um, building industry. And with, in, with increased energy efficiency, there's typically um, increased winter comfort um, associated. The same is true for summer comfort. Um, you have uh, fewer occasions when the house overheat. Um, and because of air tightness and uh, ventilation requirements, you know, the installed HRV, the air quality typically is much better than in a cold built house. There are a number of important documents that you want to have on your computer or a hard copy on your desk. Um, the main document that you should familiarize yourself with is the uh, Energy Star Manual. Right now, currently, we are working with the version uh, 12.8. If you enroll a house in the Energy Star program, now you would work in, in 12.8. If you have enrolled it um, a year ago, it would have been um, a version um, probably 12.4 or something like this. So whenever you enroll a house and whatever is um, current at this at the moment um, will be your guidance and your uh, manual. And then there are a couple of other documents. There is a technical procedures document kind of explaining the language in this document, making it um, and bringing examples and some sample uh, calculations. And then just recently um, Anna Ken came out with what they, what they call the technical user, gu user guide and best practices guide. It's a great document and I believe I actually, yes, I included a slide kind of showing you um, showing you what's in this guide. Yeah, It has tons of really good examples on um, different wall assemblies, on different air barrier approaches, on air sealing uh, techniques and air sealing details, on the mechanical systems, the different types of mechanical systems, uh, and, uh, and how you then you know calculate R values and how R values are being impacted by the various layers. So it's a great document, lots of um, good images, so easy to digest. So I uh, can only highly recommend um, to um, have a look at this and we will make sure um, that we will send you links to, um, to, to these documents so that you can download them from the Anacan uh, webpage. So, but now let's really jump into Energy Star for New Homes. Energy Star for New Homes is, uh, uh, follows a, a two-step approach. There are minimum requirements that every Energy Star project has to meet, and then there is a second step uh, in which you have to decide whether you want to follow the performance path or the prescriptive path, and we will talk about this. Performance path is the most common one, but for now let's focus on the minimum requirement. There are minimum air tightness levels, minimum insulation levels, minimum requirements when it comes to windows and doors. We talked about the HRV requirement already, and then electrical savings, and we will address all these components um, in the next few minutes. Air tightness targets. If you want to get your uh, 
project Energy Star certified, you have to meet a certain air tightness target. The, the one that you are probably most uh, often dealing with is the detached house and the, it has a target of 2.5. 2.5 air change uh, at uh, 50 Pascal and this is a target, you know, a very tough target. The average right now is 5.5 BMBC. So most of us, most of the builders are not going to um, meet that 2.5. So you have to make an effort to get there. And energy advisors are definitely uh, able um, to help you to point out, especially when you when you have mid-construction blow door tests done, to point out where the, the problem areas are and you can seal it up. In, push it down to 2.5 air change rates. And I can um, recognize that small buildings, lane warehouses for example, often have a hard time to meet this target because it is driven by the volume as well. Um, so there are additional um, supplementary targets. Um, this is the ne uh, normalized leakage area and normalized leakage rate. and you either have to meet the 2.5 or you have to meet one of these two other metrics. So, and especially small houses like lane warehouses are often uh, able to meet these targets, but not necessarily the 2.5. Or as you know, there are tons of um, uh, potential air leakages in a new built uh, house. You know, all the penetrations, um, if not, uh, if, if not done carefully, might be a potential air leakage. Um, there are attic hatches, there are joints, there are windows, there are all kind of penetrations um, and um, your energy advisor, especially at the mid-construction uh, stage, will be able to, to verify whether the, the details that you have come up with are actually working or not. And uh, you can definitely in, you know, um, discuss these details um, long before you actually start building so that you um, get some feedback on, on how well they are going to perform these details. Well, we just covered this a minute ago. Yeah? A BC average is 5.5 air change rates uh, per hour. Um, interestingly enough here on uh, Vancouver Island, southern Vancouver Island, we typically come in a bit lower, uh, lower mainland. Um, they uh, typically come in a, a bit higher. City of Vancouver has um, an air tightness uh, target in place now for quite some time, 3.5. Energy Star, the program that we are talking about here today, has 2.5, R2000, 1.5 and Passive House, uh, I just included uh, to be complete here, has 0.6 air change rate per, uh, hour, uh, at 50 Pascal. And I just um, did a uh, mid-construction blower door test on one of the Passive Houses here in Victoria yesterday and it came in at 0 0.35 so it can be done and uh, even builders that have never built a passive house um, have shown that even the first time trying a passive house um, you can go you know as low as 0 0.6 and lower so why are we concerned about air tightness why well, this explains it all on the right hand side um, it, it shows you what happens if you don't have a vapor barrier installed. Yeah? Um, moisture travels through your assembly via diffusion, so it makes it through there because you might not have a vapor barrier installed. And over the period of one year, about one third of a liter makes it through. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's something, but it's not a lot. On the other side, if you have a tiny hole, a two by two centimeter hole in your one square meter wall assembly over the period of a year in standard uh, climate and standard um, living conditions about 30 liters of moisture of water will make it through this tiny hole and what happens to it well this is the inside warm side this is the outside whatever temperature it might be your warm moist laden air that makes it through air leakages travels from the inside towards the outside and cools down. When, when air cools down it loses the ability to hold as much air uh, to hold as much water as it can hold at, at the warmer temperature. So the relative humidity 
goes up the further it goes it travels through the assembly and then at one point it will reach what we call the dew point the relative humidity of the air traveling through the assembly has suddenly 100 percent and then it and that now uh, saturated air looks for the first what we call the condensing um, pain uh, plane and it will and the water will condense most likely on the inner side of the sheathing and this photograph actually tries to show this um, experiments have been done this was the inside here you see the sheathing and this white stuff here is actually frost it's frozen water water that condensed on the uh, inner side of the sheathing and you know what happens if um, if uh, the temperature warms up it's going to thaw and it's going to if it doesn't have a chance to dry out it's going to damage your assembly and I will show you a couple of photographs a fairly new house yeah, and the homeowners just somehow um, felt that there was something wrong so they they had the walls opened and have a look how the studs um, are looking like just after a few years totally rotten away bottom plates studs everything was um, rotten away by um, wood rot and air leakage there were there were other things that played into this but air leakage was definitely a contributing factor so you don't want any moisture in your assembly and um, these um, damages can happen to a new house and especially you know our uh, walls that are uh, being more and more insulated we have to pay attention to these details and that is the reason why we want to have a very airtight building and energy star is recognizing it and energy star is requiring a 2.5 air change rate per hour and it can be done but you have to pay attention to the details so something like this obviously is not going to work yeah? penetration is not sealed so um, a much better solution or a much better detail would be this here yeah? uh, any kind of penetration whether that is um, uh, electrical plumbing or whatever it might be obviously a huge air leakage uh, and it should look like something like this um, and then yeah the plumber was probably proud of his work but this is obviously not acceptable it's an unheated crawl space behind here a huge air leakage yeah? penetrations of any kind should be sealed uh, with the appropriate materials um, rim joists often a huge uh, um, problem area and I will show you um, a digital photograph and the thermal image of the same area this is not going to work you have uh, your poly installed here as an air barrier and you use uh, acoustic sealant and you think everything uh, should be fine while well, acoustic sealant and poly only work if they are sandwiched between um, the, the drywall and and it start on the other side but this is obviously in, um, never detail never we never see any drywall so all the air leakages as you can see here the black and dark uh, colors are uh, uh, indicating cold air coming into the building um, will never be sealed here all these air leakages seen on this uh, on the thermal image will always be there and contributing to a higher air change rate and potentially damaging the the structure due to moisture issues a, a good detail and this is something that your energy advisor might uh, might talk to you about um, in order to avoid all this um, complicated air sealing uh, in within header areas and rim joists is to install what we call a rim wrap yeah you install a a piece of uh, house wrap and connect this to your um, to your polyethylene so you basically avoid the complicated detail that you otherwise have to deal with um, in your header areas and this is something that your energy advisor will uh, talk to you about so you we just have to all learn us as an industry that the air barrier is something um, you know it has a, a status that we should all appreciate and we should after it is installed we should not touch the air barrier if you if you have to go through there we have to make sure that the uh, right personnel is uh, knows about this and that it is being sealed afterwards so remember we are, we are looking at the minimum requirements for energy star Wharf, when it comes to insulation values energy star just follows the bc building code uh, minimum insulation values are exactly the same as um, 
as the, the in the bill, BC building code, uh, at least for climate zone four. With the only difference of windows and skylights, so the requirements are higher, and we have to insulate um, our entire uh, unheated uh, floor um, instead of just the um, 60 centimeters around the perimeter as the building code requires. And we will look into this uh, in more detail in a couple of minutes from now. Um, and remember, the building code requires effective insulation values. And so there was with this building code, the current building code cycle, we switched away from nominal insulation values to effective insulation values. So you can't no longer show uh, compliance by saying, you know, I installed R20. No, now it's the whole assembly, including the studs and the, the top plates and bottom plates and, and all the, the wood that we have in our uh, wood frame walls. It's all being in, taken into consideration, of, and it's the effective R value that we have to show is meeting the either the building code or the Energy Star requirements. Um, there is a trade-off methodology. Um, so, if for whatever reason you can't meet your R value requirement for a certain wall section, you can increase the insulation value in a different section. Let's say in the ceiling. And that can offset the lower insulation value. And there's a little calculation that your energy advisor is going to help you with. Uh, here, let's say this, um, we have two wall sections and required would be 2.98. This is the um, metric R value, R xi value. So um, for whatever design reason, you are not going to meet the 2.98. So this is the you know a much lower value. So now you have to go higher in other areas in order to show that this ratio, area RSI ratio, at the end is the same. Simple trade-off methodology. Same. Uh, you have something similar in the building code. So your rim joists um, have to be insulated to the same uh, R value as the uh, walls above grade. The General rule is no gap um, when insulating the concrete foundation wall. Um, if the concrete foundation wall is more than 1.2 meters below grade, there is an allowance for um, 15 centimeters for a 15 centimeter gap or 150 millimeters. Um, we have to, if there's no exterior insulation, we have to address this thermal break. Um, you know, the, bre uh, the thermal break caused by the slab typically um, being um, uh, typically at being attached to the foundation wall. So we have to install a thermal break between the slab and the foundation wall when we don't have exterior insulation to reduce the heat loss um, between uh, through the concrete foundation wall and the slab. So this is um, reducing the overall heat loss. Um, as I mentioned before, if you have a uh, slab on grade, the entire slab has to be um, insulated um, only where prohibited by structural requirements in the code. Um, you know, like for example, under the footings, um, you, you don't have to insulate here, but otherwise the entire slab has to be insulated. And on top of this, there's a requirement for a three for a 900 millimeter or three feet um, um, skirt around the perimeter, so you have to um, you have to install the skirt and you have to insulate the entire slab. So windows, are your Energy Star project needs Energy Star windows, um, and Energy Star. Um, has divided Canada into different climate zones, as you can see here. Most of the projects um, we are dealing with, uh, you know, in South and Vancouver Island, Lower Mainland, are in Zone One. So you have to make sure that your windows, um, when you order windows, that um, the label shows um, that these windows meet the zone requirements. So you can see this particular window, for example, meets the requirements for Zone One to and three, so it would be uh, a window definitely, you know, um, a, a great window for zone one, but it uh, doesn't have to meet zone two and three requirements if you if you build in zone one, but this would be a very good window. Same here, this label shows the window um, accept, acceptable for zone one and two, and so on and so forth. So different label 
um, and uh, uh, label companies have kind of different um, uh, labels. Just kind of familiarize yourself with the, the, the type of labels that you typically get on your windows and you will easily understand um, how to read them. So your, your uh, energy advisor is you know confirming most of um, the items that we have discussed when doing the site visit but some of the things your energy advisor just can't verify and so this is where you um, have to where your responsibility um, comes in. There is something uh, called the builder attestation form so you basically have to sign that yes uh, I'm the builder I, I made sure that all the requirements of Energy Star uh, are being met um, especially the, um, the requirements that an energy advisor will not be able to verify for example you know insulation under the slab you obviously won't be able to uh, verify that or duct sealing or things like this um, back to windows um, there is an exception for basement windows so basement windows don't have to be energy star and what is a basement let's start let's start right there a basement is something that is at least 1.2 meters below grade yeah? so this exception or exemption uh, comes only into effect when you have a proper basement which is defined as something that sits more than 1.2 meters uh, below grade so if you have a basement your basement windows don't need to be energy star but they still need to be double glazed, they still need, need to have low E, they need to have argon um, as an infill gas, the, the spacer needs to be insulated and if you decide to go with a, a metal frame, the metal frame needs to be thermally broken. Yeah. And all these requirements, are um, you, you find all these requirements in the manual that I pointed out earlier. And again, with the, the other two additional documents, they kind of give you some more pointers, um, some more help to understand the requirements. Your energy advisor will be uh, more than happy to explain these things to you as well. There is an allowance for windows like this, uh, but the size is limited to uh, 1.85 square meters. So if uh, your design or your designer um, wishes to install windows like this that might not meet the Energy Star requirements, that is okay as long as um, the, the total window size uh, doesn't um, exceed 1.85 um, square meters. All the doors have to be Energy Star, with the exception of one. Typically, you know, our front entrance doors are, you know, quite unique, and we really like them, and they're often custom made, so they might not have an Energy Star um, sticker on them because they aren't Energy Star. That's fine. One door can uh, be a non-Energy Star door, and all the doors that uh, lead to uh, cold rooms, wine cellars, or even a garage, uh, they don't have to be Energy Star. Uh, either, but they need to be insulated and they need to be weather stripped. Yeah. All the exterior doors, general rule, need to be Energy Star, except with the exception of one. All the doors that lead to cold spaces, like uh, uh, wine cellars or uh, garages, um, they need to be insulated and weather stripped. So let's start to look at some of the requirements around uh, mechanical systems. If you decide um, for a combo system, which is a domestic hot water system, in this particular case here, an instantaneous uh, domestic hot water heater that also provides uh, heat for your um, forced air heating system. Um, these systems have to be um, of the condensing type, so it needs to be a condensing unit, and they have to be third-party tested. There is a testing procedure called P911, and the systems need to be tested to P911. Yeah, just make sure and your energy advisor will be able to show you um, um, or will provide you with a list of the systems tested. Well, we love our fireplaces, whether natural gas or propane. If you want to have a fireplace in your Energy Star project, make sure it's direct vented and, and it has spark ignition. If you can't find a direct vented or uh, um, uh, spark or oh, direct vented is always a, a must, but if you if you 
can't find one that has a spark ignition. A pilot light, a standing pilot light, um, is okay as long as you go down the performance path. Your energy advisor, when he creates the energy model, is accounting for this additional consumption due to the, the standing pilot light. But general rule, make sure it's direct vented and has spark ignition. Yeah, that's the better design anyways. So if you have solid wood, uh, solid fuel burning appliances, make sure coal is not permitted, not that this is like a big issue, but um, just to point this out. And um, if it is um, your part of the primary heating system, again, it needs it can only be um, done in under the performance approach because your energy advisor has to model these uh, appliances. There are additional requirements, and I don't want to go into detail uh, for um, for any of them, just because it takes a long time to to list all the uh, requirements. Yeah, if you have these um, uh, automatically f uh, fueled appliances, like a pellet uh, system, if you have these masonry um, uh, fireplaces, if you have oil-fired um, furnaces, solar hot water systems, uh, or whatever it might be, there are requirements for these um, systems and you want to consult your uh, manual or your energy advisor um, and find out what the requirements are. Yeah. Uh, drain water heat recovery systems. Um, you can see the drain water heat recovery system installed right here. Uh, great system. Um, it's my opinion that it, um, it should be you know mandatory. The building codes should basically uh, make drain water heat recovery systems mandatory for every new project out there. Um, these systems are now so efficient that you can save up to 55% of the heat energy of your wastewater that otherwise would just go down the drain. Um, it's a passive system. You will never have to replace anything at all. Um, they pay off in a very short time. And so if that is part of your design, make sure that you install um, it's not a requirement under Energy Star, but if you decide to install it, make sure that um, you follow the manufacturer's instruction. At least one shower stack needs to be hooked up to this system, and it needs to be listed in uh, one of Anacan's uh, databases. So your energy advisor, again, will help you to find the right model. If your um, heating system is a natural gas or propane, uh, uh, system. Uh, again, make sure it has an electronic ignition and that the systems are um, direct vented. I told you before, um, the HRV is a must in an ENERGY STAR uh, project, so all the ENERGY STAR houses out there have a uh, heat recovery ventilator and it makes a lot of sense. You, uh, you remember we have a 2.5 um, um, air change rate at 50 Pascal requirements. So energy star houses are very airtight. We have to assure that the ventilation requirements are being met and that um, and an airtight house like this, really the only way really to do it is to install an, uh, an HRV. So the HRV needs to be at least listed in um, on the HVI um, database or it can also be an energy star um, qualified HRV. It needs to be tested to 0 and minus 25 degrees Celsius and when installed your installer when commissioning the system has to measure the, um, the air flows, um, supply an exhaust and has to verify that these two um, supply and exhaust flows are in within 10% of each other. Uh, at high speed. So Energy Star wants to ensure that only balanced systems are being installed. So your um, installer, your mechanical installer has to do the, uh, the testing when, when commissioning the system and uh, he has to adjust the flow rates uh, in order to meet this requirement. 
if you uh, integrate your HRV uh, into the forced air heating system, uh, just um, there are a number of requirements. One main requirement, it needs to be interconnected with your uh, air handler. So uh, whenever the HRV runs, the air handler has to run, which especially in the, in the shoulder uh, seasons, spring and fall, definitely gives you kind of an energy penalty because obviously having to rely on um, the uh, air handler to distribute the fresh air throughout the house um, is a kind of somewhat expensive way of uh, pushing air around in the house. But, you know, for some designs it makes sense. So just keep in mind that if your HRV is integrated into the force uh, heating system, um, there are a couple of requirements. Um, there is absolutely no allowance for any kind of uh, heating, ventilation or air conditioning uh, duct to be outside of the heated um, uh, building envelope. So nothing can go into an unheated attic or crowd space or whatsoever. Everything has to be in within the heated building envelope. Makes a lot of sense. There are quite a few requirements when it comes to um, sealing for the um, uh, the ducts of a forced air heating system. On the supply side, so I'm kind of showing here, you know, on the left hand side, supply side, on the right hand side, the return side. On the supply side, absolutely everything needs to be sealed. On the return side, we are not uh, so much concerned about that. It's an either or. It's either the first horizontally horizontal meter that needs to be um, sealed. So yeah, this is the first meter. So everything including included in this first meter needs to be sealed. Or if it is in a dedicated mechanical room, in a, in a room dedicated for this furnace, everything in within that mechanical room on the return side needs to be insulated. Um, not insulated, I'm sorry, um, sealed. So similar requirements for the HRV. Um, on the um, Supply side, so this, the side that um, connects the HRV with um, the vent hoods um, outside, uh, it needs to be insulated and sealed. And on the house side, um, the distribution side, um, all the ducts need to be um, sealed. Do you remember I said Energy Star um, um, basically is a, is a program that also um, has a requirement when it comes to appliances and lighting. And the way they do this, they don't necessarily force you to have everything Energy Star. No, they say you have to show that your, your project is 400 kilowatt hours per year more energy efficient when it comes to appliances and plug loads than a, a standard house. And how, how, how do we do this? Well, there's a table, you see, if you go for Energy Star, certified dishwasher, you get 20 kilowatt hours, clothes washer, and so on and so forth. If your lighting system is an Energy Star uh, uh, certified, either the fixtures or the light bulbs, um, you get certain points when uh, uh, saving credits when, when you do it in, in the kitchen or the whole house, you see the entire house is 420, so which means you would meet the 400 kilowatt hours per year requirement by um, switching the entire house to an um, Energy Star certified um, uh, lighting system. So you need in total 400 kilowatt hours per year in order to meet the requirements and you can see you can also uh, install Energy Star um, bathroom fans or rain shirts and you get some points there. So, so far we looked at the minimum requirements, yeah, minimum air tightness and so on and so forth. So the second step is to choose an approach with the performance approach being the most common one. So let's just look at um, who's typically choosing the performance uh, path and why. You know what? It's the, it gives you the greatest uh, flexibility. You can do a lot of things and your energy advisor just has to show with, with his um, energy model that the, the main requirement, Energide 81, is being met. Um, you, um, every house is being tested and, uh, and modeled. The, the prescriptive path, basically, is for, um, for tract builders, for um, builders that build hundreds of houses and most of them are the same and they just want to be able to price and cost everything else way ahead and they uh, might like the prescriptive path and I will uh, tell you the difference uh, in a couple of minutes from now. So performance approach, you have to meet all the minimum requirements we just discussed and then um, the energy advisor has to create an energy model and it has to show that the um, Energide is uh, 
um, higher or equal or higher than 81 uh, uh, in our climate zone. You might ask yourself, oh, wait a minute, 81, I thought this uh, scale was replaced by now the new scale. That's correct. And Anna Ken is working hard to, um, to basically uh, transition to the new scale with the Energy Star program as well, but it might take another year or so. Um, so the new scale is a consumption-based scale where it basically the lower the number, the better the house. Here, the higher the number, the better the house. And you might have heard about this, and um, I, I won't have the time to explain the new label, and you, you probably have listened to some webinars or you have read about the new label. I, um, it's a huge improvement, and Energy Star is still relying on the the old one but is going to transition at one point. So yeah, so your energy advisor is using HOT2000, um, the famous energy modeling software, modeling each component of the, the project, um, ceilings, walls, um, exposed floors, foundation, and so on and so forth. And let's say this project came in at 85. Perfect. If you're sure that all the minimum requirements are met, um, this house is going to be certified as an energy star. But let's assume the house is not going to meet 81. Uh, what are we going to do? Why well, your energy advisor is now going into the model and he tries to find ways to push the energy guide from 79 to 81. Or, for example, here, this is a wall assembly. He might go into the insulation layers and, and switch it from R20 to R22. And he might just add an... Uh, one inch of exterior insulation as well to, you know, to push the performance to 81. Maybe he um, instead, or maybe that's not enough, and maybe he goes into the into the um, uh, attic assembly, and um, maybe it's uh, it will be good enough to just adjust the heel height to be able to have a higher insulation value right in the in the heel. Um, or um, another approach is um, to in, increase the efficiency ratings for mechanical systems. In this particular case, the project has an air source heat pump, and maybe by increasing what's called the HSPF um, rating, by increasing this rating, maybe that was, would be good enough to push it to um, 81. So your energy advisor will provide you with you know, some kind of a, a report. Um, the way we like to do things, you, you get a report with you know, a number of different upgrade packages because, again, do you remember, like I said, Energy Star is a very flexible program. So there are often many different ways to get to 81 or even uh, beyond 81. Um, and then it's up to you um, to decide which path suits your um, business uh, and your, your, your goals best. So how is this whole process then? How, how does the, the process work? Um, well, as I said, your energy advisor, and we are talking about the performance path, your energy advisor has to model the house. Once the house is being built, there will be a site visit, and your energy advisor will verify that all the requirements, you know, we talked about the minimum requirements, are being met. You will have to sign the attestation form for the requirements that your energy advisor can't confirm, and there will be a blow-door test in order to um, to confirm that the 2.5 air change rates as, the, as a requirement are being met. Um, so let's now look at the prescriptive path. And I will kind of go through this a, uh, um, a bit faster uh, for two reasons. We are running out of time. And also uh, because um, the prescriptive path is really something that um, only like uh, large builders are actually looking into. So. There are some core requirements that are higher than the minimum requirements, and then on top of this, there is um, there are upgrade packages that you have to pick and choose from. So just to show you, um, and then again, there are you know the the um, insulation requirements are all based on effective insulation values, and uh, because no energy advisor is modeling your project, uh, you might even have to, you know, with the help of your energy advisor, uh, determine what the insulation value of your uh, project is, um, uh, using, for example, this um, document, very helpful when determining uh, the overall insulation value of a, of a wall assembly, for example. So, yeah, just a, a quick... Um, uh, view in, in into this document, yeah, a two by six um, 
uh, assembly. Let's say we are um, having a rock soil 20, R24 uh, nominal insulation value and we have 16 inches on center. Whoops, there is our effective um, RSI, our effective R value. And now on top of this, um, we have exterior and interior air films, we have siding, we have sheathing, and so on and so forth, and that will bring us to an effective R value. Uh, so if you, if you have never done an effective R value calculation, your energy advisor is going to help you to understand how this works. Um, when you, when you f uh, follow the uh, prescriptive path, there is a requirement that your window wall ratio has to be less than 20% for the above grade wall area. If you wish to have more windows than 20% uh, uh, window wall ratio, you have to um, uh, follow performance path. It needs to be modeled. Um, Space heating, they are now in the prescriptive path. It has to be, has to be at least 92% uh, effi uh, efficient if you have a gas uh, or propane boiler or furnace, or you have to install a heat pump or um, an electric resistant uh, heater with an inline uh, uh, thermostat. There, there are a number of requirements when it comes to standby heat loss for electric hot water tanks and for if you decide for natural gas hot water tank, it has to have at least uh, 0.67 uh, energy factor. So there are minimum requirements that need to be met uh, if on top on top of the, uh, the minimum requirements that we discussed at the beginning of this presentation. Um, again, HRV, every Energy Star project has an HRV, but under the prescriptive path, there is now a minimum efficiency requirement. Under the performance, there is no minimum uh, efficiency requirement. Prescriptive, there is. It needs to be 60% um, efficient at uh, um, zero degrees Celsius. So, so we looked at the what we call the core uh, requirements, and now we will go to the uh, upgrade packages. So you have to meet these for all your prescriptive uh, projects, and now you can pick and choose from uh, from tables to get enough points together to prove that you meet the prescriptive um, requirements. Or just to kind of show you, this is a table from the uh, wall section of your uh, manual. So we are here, Lower Mainland and uh, Southern Vancouver Island, less than 3,000 heating degree days. If you, this is the minimum requirement, which is the same as the code, if you decide to to go much higher, you know, R22, for example, you would get 1.4 points, and the point, the number of points you need for uh, climate zone uh, 4 or less than 3,000 heating degree days is um, 2.5 points, so you are halfway there if you decide to increase the insulation values. More, there are other ways of doing it, you know, you can um, increase the insulation values for your foundation walls. This is the minimum requirement, and you will recognize the number, it's the same as the building code. If you go higher, you get additional points. And again, here in um, uh, in our climate zone, less than 3,000 heating degree days, we need 2.5 points to show um, that we meet Energy Star requirements. Yeah. And there are many other ways of getting there. Very uh, flexible. This um, uh, table shows us what we the, the, the kind of points we get. If we decide, you know, remember I said prescriptive minimum efficiency for your HRV is 60%. If you go higher, you get, um, you know, let's say 65%, you get uh, 0.1 point. And if you go all the way up to 84%, uh, 0.5 points. And and you can see the, the points are different for different climate zones. Um, just make sure you always know in which climate zone you are building in um, so that you, you uh, can find the, 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 the uh, right points for your project. So what is different when it comes to the verification process? In the prescriptive approach, there is no energy modeling, not at all. Nevertheless, energy advisors are still involved because they still come and do a site visit and they still confirm that all the minimum requirements and all the uh, packages that you chose that everything is being implemented. And there is a blow door test, so that 2.5 air change rate at 50 Pascal is still a requirement, but no energy modeling. Yeah, and um, most builders, as I said, um, go for the uh, performance path, so they like to have an energy model created. 
this prescriptive path is more uh, for builders that build a lot of houses and want to build them all in the same way. Um, and there is something what, what's called the batch sampling protocol. If the builder can show that uh, five houses in a row meet the requirement, only every third house um, afterwards need to be blow door tested. So there are also some rebates out there. You probably have heard about the $2,000 uh, for an Energy Star project from uh, Fortis BC. Um, uh, BC Hydro pulled out um, a while ago uh, for various reasons. So it has to be a um, natural gas house. And um, only when you are in the in southern interior area um, in the uh, electric for this electric area, you can get uh, $2,000 when you have an electric, uh, electrically heated project. But the main um, uh, grant is the $2,000 when you heat your house with natural gas. There are, if you are in New West, um, contact the folks from from the new from New West. Um, they offer free and a guide uh, uh, energy modeling and a free blow door testing mid construction it's about you know it's worth about three thousand uh, three hundred uh, dollars and the energy modeling typically typically costs about five hundred dollars so altogether eight hundred dollars you can um, get from the, the the city of New West and um, and that helps you to get to the two thousand dollars from the utilities so keep this in mind if you have a project in New West uh, Township of Langley they offer um, um, something similar so if you are if your project comes in uh, 80 and plus uh, 80 and above for a single family um, you can get um, up to seven hundred fifty dollars and uh, the energy modeling uh, um, is being the costs are being um, covered by the uh, township of Langley so just keep in mind township of Langley New West they have interesting um, uh, programs that help you to offset some of the costs uh, working with an energy advisor, for example. But again, you should work with an energy advisor regardless. Um, there's a homeowner rebate uh, from um, uh, CMHC, um, the, the mortgage loan insurance refund. So if your house is an energy star, uh, the homeowner can get up to 15% back uh, uh, or a refund uh, for insuring his uh, mortgage. Um, so. We have two minutes left and I think we are almost there. This kind of summarizes the process of an Energy Star project. So first you have to become a Energy Star licensed builder and that's very easy and we will, uh, uh, I will show you a slide after this one here. You will have to work with a certified energy advisor, with an energy advisor. Um, Natural Resources Canada recently drop the word certified so energy advisor and then once the, and the energy advisor will explain you all the, the ins and outs of uh, the energy stuff on your homes program once the house is being built there will be a site visit and then if all the requirements are being met there will be a label and you can market your house as an energy star project um, so just um, a couple of words about how to get um, uh, license as an Energy Star builder, why you contact um, the uh, service organization of your choice. City Green Solutions is one of them, but there are more service organizations out there. And you will fill in a, a form. The form is being sent to the service organization. The service organization contacts Natural Resources Canada, and you will then hear back from Natural Resources Canada, and uh, you will re uh, respond to their email, and then you are licensed. So very easy, uh, very straightforward, and um, this is um, just a, a close-up on what you have to provide your service organization with, you know, contact name, phone numbers, and so on and so forth, and um, most importantly, your HPO license number. Um, so this way, um, Anna can uh, can be assured that um, um, all the the legal um, aspects of uh, being a builder are being are being met. So, it is four o'clock, so we are right on time. Um, again, my name is Torsten Ely, and um, you have my email address right here, torsten.ely at citygreen.ca. There is a phone number, a toll-free to phone number, one 
9995. And uh, if you want to learn more about City Green Solutions, just uh, come and visit us on our webpage, um, www.citygreen.ca. Thank you very much for listening in. Thank you very much for your uh, interest in Energy Star for New Homes. As I said before, please um, uh, take a couple of minutes and uh, fill in the survey that will be uh, that will pop up as soon as as we finish this presentation, and uh, we will send you an email providing you with um, uh, answers to all the potential questions you might have had, and uh, with a um, um, uh, with a document, uh, a PDF document showing all the slides and a link to the recording if you wish that your colleagues or uh, or team members uh, uh, should listen to this presentation. Thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon and uh, hope to um, to have you all back here at a later point. Next week um, um, at the same time, Wednesday, 3 o'clock, we will have a presentation on um, high R-value wall assemblies. So if you are interested in going beyond code, if you want to hear some um, uh, examples on what high performance uh, and high R values might look like and what the implications are. Um, it's a very, uh, we have lots of registrations already, so just, um, um, and, and I believe you got, a, you got an email um, about this uh, webinar, so I just encourage you to, um, to uh, listen in next week, 3 o'clock again. Um, all the best to you. Bye-bye for now.